You know that feeling when you just understood nothing of what your teacher just said to you? Well, I'm going to tell you how you can avoid that ever happening again. Maybe you've just finished your GCSE year and you're wondering about what the step up to A-level is going to be like. Well, it's massive. <laughs> just think about how many GCSEs you sat and think about all of the work that went into preparing for those. And then remember that you're now going to be studying just three or four subjects. So think about all of that work is going to be spread out with between just three or four subjects. So you have to put in that amount of time, that amount of commitment into those three subjects. The level of challenge is much harder and also the depth and the breadth of that subject knowledge is much higher as well. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's simply more content in an A-level than a GCSE much more. And the way that you have to understand, apply and analyze those ideas goes much deeper as well. Questions aren't so formulaic, they can ask you similar things in many more different ways and loads of students get really hung up on the challenge of understanding even what the questions are asking you about. You need to get to a point in A level where you're fluent in your subject content and that you can apply it to any given context that they're going to give you. I have another video here about that where I talk about how all A level questions really start from that apply skill. So questions, questions, questions. That is the most important thing about A-Level. Firstly, there are three types of questions that you need to be doing throughout the whole course. Just recall questions. You need to find a way either by using a quizzing app or by making your own or by using lists provided to you by teachers of just doing recall practice so that you are totally fluent in the content of your A-Level. Secondly, you need to do the practice questions. Now those questions are the ones that you typically find at the end of a double page spread in a textbook. And they're so well written that they're gonna point you around all of the different angles that content can be approached from. So make sure you do those. And then lastly, it's the exam questions. An exam question practice is super important. I wouldn't make it the majority of the work that you do, but it's really important that you do tackle lots of exam questions as you're preparing for either mock exams or topic tests or anything like that, because you need to know your way around those exam questions and what they're kind of hinting at is gonna be on the mark scheme. But also questions are questions that you should be asking your teachers. And I think that's one of the most important things about A-level students. And if you want to be the biggest success that you can be, you need to be posing good questions of your teachers. You need to be, as you're working through those different types of questions, actually making a little note to yourself of the different questions you're gonna ask your teacher. You're gonna probe your own understanding by doing that. It's one of the most valuable things that you can do as a student. So here it is, this is my tip to make sure you're never in that situation where you don't understand what your teacher just said. The tip is to prepare for your lessons in advance. Get your definitions learned, read through any explanations that are gonna be in that topic, and familiarize yourself with key diagrams from that topic before the lesson on the topic. I promise you it's gonna make your learning so much more effective if when the teacher starts talking about a topic, that isn't the first time that you've been through it. So I give my students the start of every single A-level course a course textbook and that has everything that we're going to study in the order that we're going to study it and I tell my students that you need to be reading those chapters before the lesson on that chapter and ideally you're going to have done the summary questions before coming into the lesson and the difference is night and day when they have done that as opposed to when they don't and all of my students learn very early on that they'll find it a lot easier be a lot more comfortable in the class and do a lot better in those topic tests when they actually work in that way, when they come in prepared for the learning. It looks like this, right? You can either come in with a blank slate and have your teacher tell you all of the foundational knowledge at the start, in which case you're probably gonna to struggle to apply that brand new knowledge to a hard context as it comes up in the lesson. And then you won't get very far. You won't get onto the really hard stuff, the analytical and the evaluative skills during the lesson. But if you do that pre-learning, if you prepare for that lesson, you come in ready to go over it and recheck that you have understood what you've written. And then you're gonna be much more fluent when it comes to applying it to a new context, analyzing and evaluating using that knowledge and understanding. That is the key. I can promise you, if you want one tip to succeed at A-level, that is the best one. And what's more, when you start doing that and doing that independent study before the lessons, you get to this point where you get really confident. And I remember one student a couple of years ago, they were struggling to get something in class and I'd explained it two or three different ways to them. And they said, I still don't follow. And he said, oh, I can just YouTube it later on. And he did, and he went home and he, you know, that evening, just YouTubed a couple of videos, 
probably watched one or two of mine as well as a couple of others and came back into the lesson and thought yeah I get that enough and sure enough when he did the questions on it he did absolutely fine. This is a student who regularly just dropped two or three marks on topic tests and was an absolute nailed uncertain for an A star. But the point is they didn't rely on me to explain things in the lessons they knew where they could find the information and they had the confidence that they could decode that information themselves and learn for themselves. So developing that independent skill comes from being prepared, comes from knowing where the resources are and being able to find them yourselves. And if you prepare for the lessons, you make the hard stuff feel more easy and you allow yourself the time to process the really challenging learning objective. So yeah, A-level is a big step up. But remember, when you're working hard at A-level, if you're working on questions and resources that seem hard, they're probably at the right level. You're probably using the right resources and actually struggling through content that is challenging, struggling through questions that are really challenging your understanding of the content is the best way to learn and the best way to prepare yourself for those moments in those exams where the work is really, really difficult. I'd suggest you find those resources early and that you finish them, you complete them as quickly as you can during the school year. Don't hang around and wait for your teacher to cover stuff. This is the 21st century, learn at your own pace. Set yourself the goal of working through a full batch of resources. Go through full playlists on YouTube, work through full lists on your quizzing apps or online learning platforms. Just work through things, cover ground, cover material, repeatedly and the more that you're prepared for those lessons the more you'll get out of those lessons the more you'll get out of being challenged of your teacher checking whether you really truly understand something checking whether you can do a certain skill under pressure in those timed exam conditions the more you can prepare for those moments the more useful they are the more effective they are for your learning and I'd just say two more things. I'd suggest you get yourself a course textbook. I wouldn't worry about a revision guide particularly, but a course textbook, the actual textbook, which is endorsed by your course. And that you invest in something which is gonna give you lots of quizzing practice. Some online quizzes that are written by professionals, not like Kahoot, where they're often written by kids and are of dubious quality, but invest in something that's written by professionals. Ask your teachers if you're not sure what the best things are, perhaps they have something that they recommend for doing self-quizzing as well. I just want you to take that advice, be more confident when you walk into class, that you can do this. As with all education, it's about you developing so that you're more confident to tackle any challenges that you'll face.